The S&P 500 just wrapped up its best month since 1987, and we're now entering the infamous sell in May and go away time period for the market. In this week's video, Jared's going to be looking at the weekly returns as well as news stories from last week. Mike's going to be covering all the major indexes and the key resistance level that all of them failed at, and I'm going to be covering the news events that could shape the markets for the months ahead. Mike Tedeschi, Wealth Management Advisor here with last week's key chart breakdown. Uh, let's start here with the S&P 500. We saw reversals across all four of the major U.S. indexes where in the middle of the week, stocks continued to push higher. And then we saw a sharp reversal into the close on Thursday and Friday. And where we failed was very important on all these charts. The S&P 500 has major resistance right up here at that 2950 in about that 3020 area. We tested the underside of that, subsequently turned back down. The NASDAQ has strong resistance at that 9,000 level, came up into that, subsequently fell back down last week. The Dow Jones Industrial has got stiff resistance from the previous support zone last June, and that comes in at about that 24,700 level. And as you can see, reversal once again off of that key level. And the Russell, which had a stellar first half of the week, uh, failed right at that really important key 1350 level and came off sharply from that, closing back at 1260 for the week. We look at the transports, which we like to pay attention to to see how goods are moving through the economy. It failed at that key all-important 2018 low level of 8600 and made a strong reversal there as well. And then when we come in and take a look at the NASDAQ banking index, it failed right at that important gap down zone from the ninth and subsequently closed well off of that for the week. So what we want to pay very close attention to this week and moving forward is can the market come back up and test those resistance levels that failed this week and push above it? Or are we looking for a potential move back to the downside once again? Thank you. Last week, we saw three out of the four major U.S. indexes turn negative towards the end of the week. But on Monday through Wednesday of last week, the markets did perform pretty well, and that was because at the beginning of the week, some of the states started easing some of their coronavirus restrictions. And then on Wednesday, there was a much anticipated Fed meeting, and the Fed came out and said that they were going to keep interest rates near 0% until they're closer to full employment levels. Now, then on Thursday and Friday, there was some bad economic news, which turned the markets negative. On Thursday, unemployment numbers came out, and there were 30 million people over the past six weeks who have claimed unemployment. And if you think about that in context, that's one out of every five American workers. The markets continued their selling then on Friday as a lot of the big technology firms missed on their earnings from the previous quarter, as well as whenever President Trump came out and publicly blamed China for the coronavirus outbreak. And Matt's gonna be talking about that a little bit here in a minute. Now, going back to the returns, there was one big takeaway from last week. And as I mentioned right at the beginning, Three of the four major U.S. indexes were negative, but the Russell 2000 was up over 2%, which means when the S&P, the Dow, and NASDAQ were negative, the small and mid-cap stocks still ended up performing pretty well. But whenever you look at the year-to-date numbers, you'll see that the Russell 2000 is still the lagger and still down over 20% for the year, while the NASDAQ's only down 4 and the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones are down in the middle of the teens. There also wasn't a whole lot of action out of foreign and emerging stocks last week, as they were both relatively flat, emerging was down a little bit over a half a percent. But now, foreign and emerging markets are still down a little bit over 20% year to date. There are two main coronavirus battles that are going to be shaping the markets for the months ahead. The first being, as Jared mentioned, President Trump saying that he has intelligence reports that show that the coronavirus was originated and leaked from a Wuhan lab. And the second is going to be the battle between President Trump and Dr. Fauci on reopening the states. So let's cover the first one and how it could impact the markets ahead. Well, we have Secretary of State Mike Pompeo doubling down on President Trump's comments, saying that this is the first time that China's been responsible for a virus that killed so many people. Now, the Chinese people are very prideful, and there's no way that they're going to want to be blamed for so many deaths. And it's easy to see if we continue down this path, blaming China for this virus. 
that we could see a phase one trade deal that's scrapped and we could just be back to having a trade war with extreme tariffs on both sides. The second battle is happening right here in the White House between President Trump and Dr. Fauci. As President Trump wants our economy reopened, citing that the economy is struggling and so many individuals are struggling financially. But Dr. Fauci, on the other hand, wants to keep things closed, citing that if we open up too soon, that we could look at a second wave of coronavirus here in the fall, which would shut everything down again. So we already have states that are reopening. So we're going to see who's going to win this battle sooner than later. And make no mistake about it, how this reopening affects the economy is going to directly impact the markets for the months ahead. The second story that we wanted to cover was the infamous investor Warren Buffett, citing that he pulled out about $4 billion from the airline industry and is sitting on a record level of cash, about $150 billion, saying that there's really nothing attractive to buy right now. And we echo those same thoughts, and we feel that cash is going to be king for the foreseeable future. So we've had about 77% of companies report their first quarter earnings, and these earnings have been historically bad. Actually, we've had one-fifth of the companies report an earnings miss of over one standard deviation. And if you can remember back to math class, one standard deviation is about 68%. So we've had about 20% of companies miss their earnings by over 68%. These are numbers that we have not seen since the 2008 financial crisis in the fourth quarter. This week is essentially the last big week for earnings, and it's going to be interesting to see if this trend continues. As always, thanks for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button.